minutes. But we were called to action stations and we didn't go to the action until about three quarters of an hour later. As Dick reports. Altering course. We were hoping that she would surface, and then if she surfaced, we would be able to uh, torpedo her straight away. We get much more accurate information about her and for the director angle and all the rest of it, but there's no sign of her doing that. As Dick reports, he was underwater, we were underwater. He had no instructions on how to deal with it. Target in sight, bearing 060, range 1000 yards. 060, range 1000 yards. Starboard 15, steer 140. As Dick, altering course, possible zigzagging. We soon realised after quite a half an hour that he was actually zigzagging. It came up straight away on the plot. Up periscope, look for target. The next problem was to work out what the zigzag was. You know, which were the short legs and which were the long legs. So we knew that the chances were he was probably zigzagging on a complicated pattern. They told us that he was very nervous of us, of, of, of the chances of there being a British U-boat, a British submarine there. Moving in a straight line would get Wolfram back to Bergen faster, but it would also make his path predictable. Lieutenant, 40 grad backboard. With no escort, Captain Wolfram's only hope was to be a moving target. All he could do was change course as often as possible. But every periscope maneuver from Wolfram gave Launders more detailed information about the course of the U-boat. One mast sighted, bearing Zero, nine, one. If we ever saw anything of his periscope, not his radio mast, but his periscope, he had a chance to see us. So there's that risk. He wanted to get the torpedoes away in case he got his torpedoes away. HMS Ventura had been silently stalking U-864 for more than two hours now, with only four torpedo tubes to the German sub-6. Her only advantage was that U-864 might not know that it had company. Once detected, the hunter could very quickly become the hunted. Every time he turned, and when he turned away, if you like, there's a little bit of tension in the control room because in the ideal position for him to fire back at us. Launders set to work. Through a combination of estimates of distance and course, Based on the ASDIC operator's trained ear and periodic periscope sightings, he calculated the German U-boat's path. It was the fact that he had a mathematical brain and he was able to take in all the information very, very quickly and process it and then make his decision. And it was very obvious sitting at the table with him that he was, his mind was going all the time, thinking about the problems of attacking and what he would do. And of course he discussed a lot of this with us. Never before had a submerged U-boat been torpedoed. But that's exactly what Launders had in mind. The problem was, he was forced to fire blind. Launders' solution was to try to predict the next move of the German U-boat. Attention, 
Intend altering to firing course. Port 15, steer 097. Once he decided that he had, he felt confident that he knew what she was going to do next, then we, we moved away to attack. If his calculations and estimates were right, Launder's torpedoes would sink the U-boat. If he missed, then Wolfram had 22 torpedoes at his disposal. Four ends closed up at action stations. Stand by, one, two, three and four tubes. Open bow. In GeoBay's control room, everybody has their eyes fixed to the monitor. From the frozen depths, objects materialize on the screen. Mm, that's, good, that's good, that's good, yes. Slowly, the silhouette of a submarine becomes clear. That's the turn that's, a, that, that's heavy caliber. Oh, looks like that's a twin twenty. That's a twenty millimeter gun, I think. Yes. Yes, yes that thing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, twenty yeah. millimeter, I think. It seems very likely that this is that's the wreck of U eight six four. And the gun on the forecastle. Yes, there we are. It seems to have corroded quite badly. <laughs> or else it's marine life on it, is it? And then, final confirmation. After hours of probing, submerged in the seabed one of the flasks of mercury that have provoked the search. It is carefully raised to the surface. Scientists also take samples of the seawater and the sediment nearby and under the wreck. Back on shore, the scientists examine the flask, still full of mercury. It does indeed belong to U-864. After 60 years in salt water, corrosion has pitted the steel. The metal has started to deteriorate seriously. The water and sediment samples are alarming. The contamination with mercury is far above safe levels. U-864 has left a deadly legacy. On board the Ventura, Jimmy Launders has brought the boat into attack position. It's 12-12 on February the 9th, 1945. One and two tube bow caps open. Firing intervals at 17 and a half seconds. Fire one! Fire one! Fire one! The torpedo will take two minutes to reach its moving target. He's been dodging possible unseen enemies for hours, but only now are Captain Wolfram's worst fears realized. Captain! Captain, oben gerade Schraubengeräusch. Das wird nur steuerbar, circa 120 Grad. Kopfhörer. But even as the torpedo draws nearer, a second is on its way. Fire two! Fire two! Fire two! There is no time to think. There is only one hope. Emergency evasion. Alarm! Alarm! Tauchen! Unaware of the evasive action of U-864, Launders methodically follows his plan. Fire three! Fire three! Look in! Bitte weiter, das Torpedo ist Wolfram realizes three torpedoes are now on their way. 